Well, hey guys. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you five Japanese sunscreens that I personally really love and I think you guys would enjoy. I frequently get questions. Can you recommend some good Japanese sunscreens? These are some of my favorites. I have many favorites. Not only are these my current favorites that I happen to have in my possession and be actively using and have used multiple times in the past, the Can Make Mermaid seems to be out on YesStyle, so I'm not gonna talk about that in today's video. Uh, but anyways, uh, all of these sunscreens are of course fragrance-free, but these are chemical sunscreens, so that means no cast, but it also means that they can sting, they can burn. The chemical filters, however, in these sunscreens are those that are not approved for inclusion in sunscreen in the United States, and they are superior to those that we have here in our chemical sunscreens, namely avabenzone. So they offer superior broad spectrum coverage to chemical sunscreens that you buy in the States. That is why I like getting Japanese sunscreens. I also like getting Canadian sunscreens and European sunscreens for the same reason. They just have better filters. Um, I love the Japanese ones though, because unlike a lot of those I've tried from Canada and Europe, which I also love, I find the Japanese sunscreens are often in this gel aqua vehicle that is really comfortable to wear. It doesn't feel sticky, it doesn't feel heavy. And for people who wear makeup, these are these are a favorite uh, for those those of you out there trying to find makeup friendly sunscreens. Now, a lot of these sunscreens do have low molecular weight alcohol. I have a video talking about alcohols and skincare, not the devil. Low molecular weight alcohols, as you'll recall from that video, can be drying and can sting, particularly if you have sensitive skin. But they're important ingredients for active ingredients in terms of solubilizing them, so you'll find them in a lot of sunscreens. So I'll point that out in which products have alcohols and whatnot in this video. All right, starting out, a favorite of mine, I've talked about it in other videos, but it's really good. This is my third tube of it, is the Isen Mommy SPF 50 PA++++. PA, the PA rating, by the way, on Japanese sunscreens gives you some idea of how good the sunscreen is in terms of its UVA protection. And those are the wavelengths of ultraviolet light that don't burn your skin necessarily. I mean, they do to a certain extent, but by and large, what they do is penetrate deep in your skin and destroy your collagen and whatnot. Uh, the SPF tells you about mostly about UVB, which are the rays that definitely damage the skin and they namely burn the skin. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's a nice thing about Japanese sunscreens. They give you some guidance as to how good the product is in terms of UVA protection. Anyways. I love this. It is obviously, like I said, free of fragrance and free of dyes. This one does not have alcohol alcohols in it. So if you're bothered by drying alcohols, this is a great one to consider. It is waterproof. So it does have a little bit of a shininess to it. If you have oilier skin, you may not care for that. Uh, a lot of waterproof sunscreens, that's just kind of how they go on. And you know, I don't wear makeup, so I can't comment on how this plays with makeup as far as balling up or pilling up. But this one does not does not do that rolling up off of the skin thing. It really stays in place, which leads me to believe that it is a great choice for for people who wear makeup. It is moisturizing, it's not drying, and it's really good for sensitive skin types. That being said, people with rosacea can be bothered by chemical sunscreen, so you may still not get along with this but it is a good one to consider and it's you know made for kids, but. As far as the chemical filters in the Ice and Mommy, it has Juvenal A+, which will cover uh, UVA1 and UVA2. It also has Bimotrizinol, uh, which also goes by the name Tinasorb, and that will cover UVB as well as UVA1 and UVA2. And then lastly, it has a UVB filter called Octinoxate. So several good filters for broad spectrum coverage to get you good coverage against those UVA rays that can that can really set you up for a lot of issues. Um, it has ceramides in it, so it's great for the skin barrier. And it also has um, collagen and hyaluronic acid, which are wonderful humectants. It has a few berry extracts, which provide some antioxidants in the sunscreen for whatever they're worth. I've told you guys though in other videos that antioxidants in sunscreens, they're kind of a wasted effort because the sunscreen has film forming agents to allow it to function as a sunscreen. And that kind of prohibits the, 
that kind of interferes with the actual antioxidants getting into your skin so they're kind of just in there but uh, you know they're not really likely to be harmful and you know they're there for whatever they're worth. This does have jojoba oil in it um, so it's not oil free. If you are somebody with acne prone skin you know oils may cause issue for you you might want to avoid this. That being said you know, it's not a one-size-fits-all thing, and many people with oily skin love using jojoba oil and have no issue with it. So the next sunscreen that I love is the Skin Aqua UV Super Moisture Gel. This is by Roto. It is SPF 50 PA4+, and it has um, similar filters to the Ice and Mommy. It has Uvenol A+, for UVA1 and UVA2. It has Octinoxate for UVB. And it has Tinosorb for UVA1, UVA2, and UVB. And it has Uvenol T150 for UVB. So a lot of good filters for good broad spectrum coverage. And it's got um, hyaluronic acid, it's humectant, fragrance free obviously, like I said. This one, however, does have a significant amount of low molecular weight alcohol. So much so that if you hate that, in your products, you are going to detest this. You can definitely smell the alcohol when you put it on, uh, but it goes on just like, like it says, like aqua, like water. That low molecular weight alcohol that's added to help stabilize those filters also will evaporate out of your skin and just make this very, very lightweight and comfortable to wear. It's great if you have oily skin and you hate sunscreens, they make you look greasy, they make you look like a mess. This one is not greasy whatsoever, but it's not super drying despite having those drying alcohols in it. They do a good job with the formulation overall to kind of address that. Like Ice and Mommy, this one is water resistant, so it's great if you work out or you live in a humid environment where you're sweating a lot. I believe that this is a great sunscreen for men, particularly in the beard area because of the gel vehicle. It's almost like um, an aftershave and it doesn't deposit a white stuff or clumpy stuff on the hair shafts of the beard. Um, so consider giving this a whirl and it's pretty inexpensive and I, I love the pump bottle too. I mean, I know it's kind of annoying when to just go on and on about packaging, but I just find that with the sunscreens, the pump bottle is just a really convenient packaging and I love it. Number three, I've talked about in other videos before, um, but it's been a while since I've mentioned it, and you know, many of you are new, so welcome, is the Hadalabo UV White Gel. This is SPF 50 PA4+, and this one is one that, if you say, hey, I need a moisturizer, what's a good moisturizer to use with my sunscreen? Just use this. This has amazing UV filters for really broad spectrum coverage, and it's a great moisturizer, but it's not super greasy. It doesn't make you look shiny or oily. This one has Octinoxate, Parsol SLX, Tinosorb S, and Uvenol A Plus as your chemical filters. But in addition to those chemical filters, it also has titanium dioxide, which will give you some UVB and a little bit of UVA coverage as well. Um, so it's got a great grouping of filters and, and actives for sunscreen. Uh, it also has vitamin C in it as an antioxidant. Again, I told you the limitations of antioxidants and products. This one's not water resistant, however. So if you live in more of a humid climate where you need something that will stay on the skin, uh, it may not be necessarily the best choice, um, but, but it's fantastic as an everyday moisturizer with sunscreen in it. Just make sure you're putting it on all surfaces of your skin to get that, to get that good coverage, that good SPF. That is an issue. When people ask me about What's the difference between a sunscreen and a moisturizer with sunscreen? A lot of times it's how people use them. They just don't use enough moisturizer to get to the SPF on the product. So make sure you use enough of this to get, to get it to all surfaces of, of, of the face, including the eyes, ears, the neck, and apply several layers of, of this and all of these sunscreens so as to avoid skip areas. So I love this. It's, uh, like I said, not water resistant, but I believe it, it goes really well with makeup. At least that's what many of you have told me. Um, so yeah, it isn't a jar of packaging. People ask me, is that a problem? No, uh, you know, it, it's not. Uh, jar packaging is safe. There are preservatives in this that prevent it from becoming contaminated. Um, and they also help stabilize the active ingredients in this. The hot lava one does have alcohol in it. Um, so if you're bothered by that, uh, do you know that that's there? But unlike the, unlike the Skin Aqua, it's not as perceptible, meaning you don't smell that alcohol odor when you put it on, at least I don't. 
uh, but it is there. There is a little bit of a white flashy cast to the Hada Labo. That one is the one of all the five that I'm recommending that can hint at a cast because of that titanium dioxide. So if you have a darker skin type, you may not care for it. Uh, but I find that it's very, very subtle and I don't appreciate it whatsoever on my skin. The next one I haven't talked about in a while, but I recently repurchased and have been using and I still love um, is the Shiseido Sanka SPF 50 PA4 Plus. This one has Uvenol A+, Tinosorb, Octinoxate, and Parcel SLX. So you're getting a lot of good filters in there like with the rest of these. This one's not water resistant um, and it does have alcohols in it. But I find that unlike the Skin Aqua, this one is a lot more moisturizing. It's a great one for just kind of right in the middle of the road. Uh, you're not super oily, but you're not super dry. Um, it's, it's sufficiently moisturizing um, and it's not heavy, it's not greasy. I think you'll get along well with it. Um, it has as its antioxidant of choice, coenzyme Q10. Uh, again, limitations of antioxidants, but they always sneak them into sunscreens as a marketing point. Uh, but you know, it's there for whatever it's worth, but I, I really enjoy this one. Uh, it does have alcohol denaturant in it, however, so if you're bothered by that, don't choose this one. All right, number five is the Biore UV Kids Milk SPF 50 PA4+. Plus. This one does not have any alcohol denaturant for those of you who are bothered by that. And it has Tinosorb S, Uvenol A+, Uvenol T150, and Octinoxate. Um, and it is water resistant and sweat resistant. Uh, so I really love this and I don't find that um, it's uncomfortable to wear. I find it's pretty lightweight. I, I always feel as though it'd be a good one for people with oily skin who need a good water resistant sunscreen. But that being said, many of you with the more oily skin than me have commented that you find it still looks greasy. So, um, you know, I've gotten some feedback from you guys that you do find that it does look a little greasy or shiny. Um, but for me, I really enjoy it and find it's comfortable and it's a nice balance of not being too shiny for a water resistant sunscreen, which is often the case. I find they can be more on the shiny side, but also being sufficiently moisturizing and not drying. Sometimes the, those sunscreens that are just super matte, I find it, it just feels like, like it's doing this on my skin. And this is not that way, it's a nice balance. It's a good one to consider if you have sensitive skin. I mean, it's formulated for children. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of formulated with the, their more sensitive skin in mind. So I love this one and the Ice and Mommy. If you have sensitive skin, uh, consider these. They're actually pretty similar uh, in, terms of, in terms of the look on the skin. Um, and I, I think they're both a great choice. So check the description box, you guys. I'll list all these and I'll put the bullet points of the information that I've given in this video as far as what the filters are, if they're water resistant or not. Um, and so you guys have that uh, to reference. But these are some of my favorite. I have tons of other favorites from YesStyle uh, or Japanese sunscreens in general. The last point I'll make, I do get questions you know, these are, these are all chemical sunscreens, but I do get questions, can I recommend a Japanese mineral sunscreen? You guys, I really don't know of a exclusively of a sunscreen from Japan that only has minerals as its active ingredient. Um, and, you know, to be frank, I don't really seek sunscreens from outside of the US that are exclusively mineral because I don't find that that is anything unique. We have good mineral only sunscreens here, so I don't, go outsourcing that. Uh, whereas these that are chemical have unique filters that you can't get here. So for me personally, it's like, that's a lot of outsourcing for something that I know I can get here. And that being said, you know, I know some of you actually live in Japan in those areas of the world and you're looking for a mineral only sunscreen. So I would love to have one to recommend to you guys, uh, even though I don't necessarily need one. So I'm not aware of any that are exclusively mineral or that don't have fragrance. I've come across a few that have rose extract and some fragrance. The closest Japanese mineral sunscreen that I can recommend you guys is gonna be the Muji SPF Lotion. Uh, it's SPF 50. Now that one has zinc in it and it also has octinoxate, a chemical filter. So it's not an exclusive mineral sunscreen. It does have a chemical filter in it. But that's the closest mineral sunscreen that's fragrance free that I've ever used from Japan. Uh, and that being said, you can actually buy that Muji SPF here in the States. So, uh, you know, that, that, that's, you know, it's one that you can get here. So that concludes my recommendations of Japanese sunscreens. But you guys, 
There are so many fantastic ones out there and I've tried so many and I have a lot of favorites um, that I haven't mentioned in this video, but I wanted to keep it succinct and kind of hit on some that not only are really good, but are good for specific concerns and subgroups like oily skin, dry skin. So hopefully I was able to do that just with these five to kind of keep it succinct for you guys. But yes, there are so many great Japanese sunscreens out there. As a matter of fact, comment below what your favorite Japanese sunscreen is. If you've tried one or if you use them, I would love to know. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.